Hello, everyone. Um, I um, am sharing my screen and apologies for the photograph. I've, um, I have a face that's in the middle of um, some skin cancer treatment. So I'm not a very attractive lady at the moment. <laughs> so um, slow food is probably a little different um, in our approach is that we didn't start out just as a food hub. We started that as a, as a slow food group as part of the international slow food movement and um, and good clean and fair food for all is is the big part well it's it's the catchphrase of what what slow food hangs on um, and the for all is incredibly important for me and um, and I think because of that it's very much a focus of Slow Food Birmingham. Um, and then this year we have, we've really started to look at the, the, not just the good and the clean, but what the fair um, involves. Um, and so as a new group, we set out to bring um, local and seasonal food to people. And we set up a food hub with the intention that people had to actually arrive and um, collect their orders at a local pub, which gave us um, a bit of a, an opportunity to talk about what slow food was about. Um, we referred to it as our farm shop in the city. Um, and those of you who know me um, will know that I talk about Birmingham as um, the UK's second city, as um, the black hole in the middle of this beautiful, luscious do food donut. Um, there are no independent retail stores in the Jewelry Quarter, which is um, um, affectionately known as the village on the edge of the city. Um, it, it's, a, it's a growing residential area. And um, so that is what we actually set out to do. Um, and we thought it would be super easy. Um, of course, we, we, we knew who the, um, the farmers were. We just had to ask them to bring their produce in. Um, but it didn't uh, turn out to be that easy. Um, it took us six months to find the producers who wanted to bring, um, bring their food in. Um, and, and then we had to build that community from scratch. Um, and what we found is using Open Food Network has been really, really helpful to do that. Um, and um, it, because we do pick up, is how we have enabled to have that, that, um, those weekly conversations with people about the fact that you're not gonna to get tomatoes at this time of the year. And that um, we, the salt that we sell is, is a lot more expensive than the salt that you will buy in a supermarket because it's made in Droitwich and it's the salt that's being made for the first time in a hundred years. And I suppose then you're all sort of going, okay, well, how does this fit in with, um, with the, the conversation? And the reality is that when COVID hit, we tripled our numbers um, of orders and we realised that we needed an army of volunteers. So food is 100% uh, volunteer run. So we do price ourselves a little differently because we don't charge for packing and things like that. Um, but what we found was that we did we'd already built this community um and and it was fantastic to see people step up um we then had a phone call from one of our producers who said that um he had been left with a field or two fields full of potatoes um and could we help out because he didn't want the food to, to rot? Um, and we instigated the potato project. We sold 11 tonnes of potatoes for 10 pounds a ki uh, for 10 kilos. Eight of those kilos went into the food emergency groups that we were working with um, and people collected in lovely slow food tote bags, um, two kilos. Um, that was our first foray really into working um, with food justice. Um, and, and what we realised was that because we were talking to our shoppers, not just about their produce and things like that, they were really ready to step up and, and help out. Um, and so we started to have a conversation with them about the fact that this is not food poverty that is the big problem. It is the food dignity um, and that people who are in food crisis could be you and I. 
Um, and the amount of people that we met who had lost jobs, who had never had to, um, had to ask for help before, um, it, it's been heartbreaking. Um, so one of the things that we did as we chatted to people was we worked with Incredible Surplus um, and um, they had crazy deliveries of things. As you can see, there's a mountain of beautiful French brie over here and we've got lovely um, preserved lemons and things like that. These are not things that would normally go into a, um, a food emergency bag. So we actually ask our shoppers when they arrived if they'd like to purchase something from us um, with a contactless uh, payment. And then when we were doing the potato project, we sold them potatoes as well. Um, we then realised that we had a real opportunity to do something um, that wasn't just um, selling potatoes, it wasn't just talking to people about food, that we had a bit of a platform and we'd been working to try and bring a project called Bags of Taste into Birmingham. And so we, we started asking our um, our shoppers if they'd like to put something towards the Bags of Taste program, uh, which to our pleasure, uh, we've just completed the first, um, the first pilot um, of the project. And um, some of the photographs you can see, we've got a great team of volunteers who put all the ingredients together um, and some amazing meals that have been cooked by the, um, the 36 participants. That project is now in the post, um, in the pipeline of being funded by Birmingham Health. So we've shown that there was a real need. Um, it's not our our strength is not to run the program, but our strength is in highlighting it. I think that Slow Food really believes that we are we're lobbyists, um, and because of the potato project and and we did receive a massive amount of uh, of coverage from people we had a lot of allotment um, growers and community gardens coming and saying to us can we donate um, our veg to you so that then we became the pipeline and the funnel to um to be able to access access that in the meantime We've had some members who have set up a gleaning network and they're working with the producers that we work with um, and that we, we pick up from each week. And they're going to start collecting, uh, going through their fields and collecting surplus. We're talking to some other producers about setting up CSAs. And we're also um, looking um, and talking to, to other producers about starting some healthy start veg box schemes. So it's been a bit of a, um, a, an amazing year. And then we hit October midterm break. And, and until that point, this was more of a, um, an ideological thing it was a way that people could feel that they could pull together and things like that but when we hit October mid midterm break and we learnt the, the stat that every day that a child goes hungry they lose a week of attainment at school by the age of 16 that accounts to a year it really did get political um, we we pulled Liam Byrne who um, is um, a candidate for for mayor into the program we asked everybody um, to pay it forward. The pub that we um, we used for our pickups cooked meals. We we sent over two hundred bags out in that midterm break. Um, what we what we did is has been just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what Birmingham's done. Um, we are part of a new project called Brum Together. Um, and this year they have uh, delivered 80,000 meals and bags, but there's 80 different groups working together now. Um, so when I, when I say that the, the pay it forward that we've put through um, on, on our food hub has raised 2,000, I think that we're getting closer to 2,500 at the moment. Um, it has been a tip of the iceberg of what's happened in Birmingham. Um, and, and I think that we're really showing that if we work together with other groups, we're much stronger. Um, 
So what we have done on Open Food Network is there is never a point in time when the pay it forward meals are closed. So when our weekly um, ordering system is on, it's at the top of our, um, our offering. And when the orders close, this offer gets turned on. So at any particular point in time, if somebody goes through to the Slow Food Birmingham um, Open Food Network site, they, they will always get an opportunity to be able to play it forward. Um, and I think that as, as, as our other speakers have said, and I'm sure that the other speakers uh, will say, that there is so much overlap about what we, can, what we are doing um, as a nation. And I think that what we need to do is we need to think about how we can continue that and the changes that we've seen and the calls that we've seen this year, how we can then, um, how we can continue to pay that forward as, as we move out of COVID times.